We are, of course, still in the middle of winter, but odds are increasing for La Nina to return by the peak of hurricane season. Certainly not the best news. What's going on, guys? Certified meteorologist Jonathan Kegas here to break down the changes that are happening with El Nino as we speak and the probability that La Nina comes back for hurricane season. Again, just from a surface level, La Nina typically means a more active Atlantic hurricane season. So first things first, we're going to break down the current sea surface temperature anomaly where El Nino is still in full effect but before we break all that down if you want to stay updated on what is likely going to be an active end to winter and what could be a very active hurricane season you've come to the right place hit that subscribe button and if you happen to find con uh, value in this content please hit that thumbs up button it's a really small ask but it really does help us out a lot so i appreciate that a ton so here is the deal We've shown you this graphic before, this sea surface temperature anomaly graphic before, and it was bright purple out here in what we call the Nino 3.4 range, which is right here. Notice that these colors here representing the anomaly, the sea surface temperature anomaly in degrees Celsius, it's not all that impressive anymore. We are seeing kind of the crash here of El Nino as an expected transition back into what we call Enso neutral over the next couple of months, the start of summer, and then eventually La Nina. So I want to show you something here from tropicaltidbits.com, great resource for the weather nerds out there, uh, of the seven-day anomaly change here. And there's a lot going on. This is the map of the world, of course, but I want to focus your attention here to the map uh, where my mouse is. And note here, again, we're looking in the region off of the equatorial uh, coastline of Peru. And note what is happening here. See the blue popping back up? So we've had now that net change negative. Over the, next, over the last seven days here, we have the change for the colder. So something to keep in mind here. Uh, we're going to go back to the other weather computer and again showing you that El Nino is still there and it is expected to persist through the rest of winter and spring. But look at this. This is the official Climate Prediction Center, NOAA's Climate Prediction Center, ENSO probability. Again, ENSO is the parent oscillation between El Nino and La Nina. The negative phase, the cool phase is La Nina. Uh, the warm phase, what we are in now, is El Nino. And note again through the... And the it's, it's characterized by a three-month average, by the way. So down here, um, let me bring out my trusty arrow. We have January, February, March. Again, 100%. That's what we're, in, we're dealing with right now. Still 100%. February, March, April. But then look at this. The gray bars start to pop up as we get into, uh, as we get into April, May, June. That's Enso neutral. Or what we call La Nada. It's kind of a joke. Um, the weather people get it. You guys get it. Uh, it just means that nothing is going on. We're not either in El Nino or La Nina. But look at the blue bars come surging back as we get into the start of summer. There's July, August, September. And then here we go. This ASO, that is the peak of hurricane season. August, September, October. We now have a greater than 70% shot that we have a La Nina for the peak of hurricane season. In short, La Nina means that we are reducing the wind, the wind shear in the Atlantic basin, the subtropical jet stream backs off. Hurricanes get more disorganized when we have wind shear around. So they do not like wind shear. So again, that is positive for the hurricanes, not good news for us. It also promotes more storminess in the Atlantic. You need to have thunderstorms to be there to eventually uh, develop and consolidate into a tropical depression storm and eventually hurricane the other thing here of note we are still in an el nino advisory from the climate prediction center meaning that we are in el nino right now but what the kind of new breaking development is we're in now a la nina watch meaning that el, uh, la nina conditions again are going to be possible going forward and you see the percentage there really starting to ramp up um, for the peak of hurricane season. One of the reasons, another reason why that this isn't great, uh, we're going to look back at the sea surface temperature anomaly, now not for the Pacific where we just were, but for the Atlantic. If we do get the conditions to f be the La Nina as it's expected, which would promote more storms, look at this. Look at the water temperature in the Atlantic. This is more indicative of June or July. The anomalies are crazy, almost greater than 4 degrees, maybe 5 degrees Celsius above normal, closer to the Cabo Verde Islands. This is the area that we characterize as the main development region of the Atlantic hurricane season right here. We get those storms that roll off of Africa, close to the Cabo Verde Islands. That's the Cabo Verde season. 
and then roll out through here and then make their long trek either into the Caribbean, close to the United States, or depending upon the strength of the Bermuda High, what we like, right out to sea, leaving all landmass alone. So that is something that we are going to watch too. That means these things can get strong. Now, a lot of times too, if these guys get strong out here, they have a, more of a tendency to feel any kind of weakness in the ridge of high pressure there and go on out. So again, there's still a lot of things in play and steering currents really haven't, uh, or are not fine-tuned right now. Of course, it is only February at the time that we are recording this video, but nonetheless, we don't like to see the warmth raging right here and then above normal temperatures as well in the Caribbean. I want to show you another thing as well back on Tropical Tidbits. And again, I don't want to scare anybody. This is just kind of awareness and just some of the things that we are watching and kind of trends to watch. And that's why if you are into the weather, I would love for you guys to hit that subscribe button because uh, we have this conversation and we talk about trends to watch. And that is what I want to show you with this. This is uh, one of the longer range models. This is the uh, Anomaly of total accumulated precipitation from the NMME model. This is for the month of August. And we just talked about that Cabo Verde season. And where you're seeing the green here, this is the anomaly. Well, how do we... We have, we have something known as the intertropical convergence zone here that could be contributing to some of the higher than normal precip anomalies. But you see it here. This could indicate a very active West African monsoon season, which again get those storms to develop over the African mainland and then come out here and then you see it. Look at where these storms could be going. Again, we could have uh, an active Caribbean season and then the Gulf also has those higher than normal rainfall uh, probabilities and then into parts of the southeast corner of the United States into September. Unfortunately, more of the same. October, again, as we climatologically shut down the Cabo Verde season, those long track storms off of the coast of Africa, they're still higher than normal precip anomalies, again, coming for uh, the Caribbean. So it's something to watch. It's something to be mindful of. Again, we don't want to see that crash of El Nino and rise of La Nina. Unfortunately, that looks like it's going to be the case. And again, something that we are going to be monitoring, of course, going into the start of hurricane season, there's still a lot of time to kind of watch the trends. There can be as many storms as as anybody wants out there, a hundred storms. If they don't hit land, it doesn't matter. So the point I'm trying to make is there could be a lot of storms. The steering currents are yet to be defined. Certainly what we see here is not good news, but again, we can always look for that. There's anomalies up here too. Here is Bermuda where we have that, where I have my mouse. There's also anomalies up here, which could mean again, we also have that opportunity for uh, the Bermuda High to steer things out to sea. So that's what I want to mean. That's what I mean by I don't want to freak anybody out here by talking about this. Uh, steering currents are still undefined. It doesn't matter how many storms are they are. If they stay out to sea and mess with the fish, it's okay. But it's something that we're going to be watching. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Again, if you found this content helpful, please hit that thumbs up button. And if you are a weather nerd and if you love talking about the weather, you've come to the right place. Post in the comments where you're tuning in from. I would love to know what the weather is doing, uh, where you are watching from. And we will catch you next time.